Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, in a maths exam, one candidate struggles to remember if timesing makes things bigger or smaller. <laughs> <laughs> At the Labour conference, after Keir Starmer orders a patriotic rendition of the national anthem, John Prescott is less than happy about his part in the proceedings. <laughs> <laughs> and at the Olympic Park swimming pool, there's just time for one last symbolic event in the festival of Brexit. Johnny Ian's team tonight is a comedian who once worked as an investigator at the Serious Fraud Office, who currently have their hands full working out how the hell Quasi Quateng got his PhD in economics. Please <laughs> welcome Real Enum! <laughs> on Paul's team tonight is a journalist who hosts a live show on Times Radio, though, of course, we only have his word for that. Please welcome <laughs> Matt Chorley! <laughs> We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Matt, have a look at yes. this. Yes, there's our Chantal Exchequer moving in slow motion for some reason. <laughs> there she is, always aware. Well, a little smile for the camera. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, there's a bunch of white men, as usual, typical, just doing what they do best, and he's talking on the... Oh, I do beg your pardon. It's all, um... <laughs> <laughs> do you know what this is? It's absolutely hilarious, it's, is what it is. Is it? Well, the polls are very funny. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the latest polls put the Tories uh, 34 points behind the Labour Party. 34 points behind? Behind. What would that mean if there was a... Gen if if yeah. there was a general election, the Conservative Tomorrow. Party would consist of three people in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if it were, Labour would be on course for a 492-seat majority. Yeah. 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 And that's a Tory audience. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, an economic downturn which has happened since Friday's mini-budget, which uh, Rishi Sunak, during the Tory leadership contest, predicted would happen if uh, Liz Truss won and followed through her policies. Should we have a look at Rishi? Here he is. Your plans, your own economic advisor, has said that that would lead to mortgage rates, interest rates going up to 7%. Can you imagine what that's going to do for everyone here and everyone watching? That's thousands of pounds on their mortgage bill. So I don't think the responsible thing to do right now is launch into some unfunded spree of borrowing and more debt. That will just make inflation worse. Just it will make the problem longer. It's almost like he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> We should start by saying something about the bond market. I have no idea how it works, Paul. Uh, no, I don't know. I've actually got uh, grade five CSE maths, <laughs> which is the equivalent of 25 yards breaststroke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that may well mean you're the next chancellor. Oh. <laughs> mentioned about Quasi having a PhD in economics, which yes. has come up before. No, he has a PhD in economic history. It's specifically about the great recoinage of 1696, OK? <laughs> he doesn't know squat about what he's doing. And in case you're wondering, was that a financial success, the great recoinage of yep. 1696? It was not. He has a PhD <laughs> in failure. So... <laughs> I tell you, those of us who lived through that particular crisis... <laughs> Ian was the editor of Ye Private Eye. <laughs> Absolutely everybody else did say this is going to be a disaster. And, and the new Prime Minister, I mean, who knows if she'll be Prime Minister when this repeat goes out, but... <laughs> you perfectly well. She fired her chief civil service at the Treasury. She told everybody who disagreed with her, you're wrong, I'm right. And she said, let the market decide. And they did. <laughs> I mean, it's an amazing record, isn't it? She's tanked the entire British economy in her first active working week. <laughs> Would you say it's looking like a honeymoon period is sort of a bit of a rough and rocky... It's like she's gone on honeymoon to Florida. Yes. <laughs> yes. Where Hurricane Ian... Yes. Hurricane Ian is... Kind of, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Just can't leave things alone. Meteorologically speaking, you're causing havoc in Florida. I'd like to apologise. I was hoping I would be light breeze Ian. <laughs> <laughs> what did Liz Truss do on Thursday? Uh, she went on BBC local radio, hoping mm. that that would be a nice, easy ride. That's right, I think yes. she's an MP in Norfolk and she thinks that Alan Partridge is a real person. <laughs> <laughs> During the course of an hour, she was monstered by people having their five minutes of fame, knowing they never had to speak to her again because 
there'll be someone else quite soon. <laughs> she couldn't cope with any of it. The first question was, what did you have for breakfast? And she said, I don't accept the premise. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the beginning, how did it all start? Boris Johnson had a party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The beginning of this week will do. Beginning of this week? Oh. Can you remember the beginning of the week? No, not the beginning on of the Monday. week. Monday. Monday. There was, there was a run on the pound. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It fell dramatically. It was almost equal to one dollar at one point. Yeah. It yeah. was called levelling up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Times called last Monday a day of turmoil. The Independent called it an all-time low. The Telegraph, pound chaos. The Daily Star had honey, I shrunk the quids. <laughs> The new European just went with this. <laughs> <laughs> what did Trusquart think what would what? happen? Trusquart. Huh? Like Brangelina. Is it? No, no, if you put their names together, it suggests they're in agreement. Whereas I think the story now, Matt will know, is that they're now arguing. Yeah, they had a bit of a row about what they should do and should they say anything. Yes, <laughs> decided not to. Decided not to. Yes. And then they did which confirmed their original decision was the correct one. <laughs> <laughs> Who insulted Quasi recently? Well, there have been a lot of people having a lot of cheap fun with mm. nicknames for mm. him. I mean, someone called his whole strategy Kamikwazi. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that wasn't very funny. No. <laughs> Other people saying, you know, his strategy should be Kazi quatting because that's where where the economy's gone. <laughs> anyway, I don't approve of any of these jokes. What did Lord Hannon on Conservative Home websites say markets are panicking about? This was an outrageous piece. Daniel Hannon claimed that the reason the economy was tanking was all Keir Starmer's fault. <laughs> <laughs> and a number of the newspapers said that the reason the pound was tanking was because of Remainers. Mm. <laughs> yes, this is uh, Quasi's old hedge fund boss. Crispin Odie. Crispin Odie, who's known in the business as Crispin Odious. <laughs> and that's by his mates. He said a lot of Remainers in the city hate this government and hate Quasi as well. And they started this currency route. Which he then joined in on, betting against the pound and making yet another fortune, having bet against the referendum result. That's what he does. He just talks the country down and takes the money. Not even saying allegedly. <laughs> The government's going to punish these people oh, yes. by taking the cap off their bonuses. Well... <laughs> <laughs> when we had the bank crashes in 08, the wealth gap widened. When the pandemic happened, the wealth gap widened. We don't see it ever working. And actually, what we learned of the pandemic is that the people that keep the country going are our essential workers. We weren't clapping on a Thursday for hedge fund investors, were we? <laughs> You weren't clapping then for hedge funding, but... Yeah. <laughs> what, in fact, is the government going to do about it? Nothing. Let's see how eloquently that is spelt out. Do you have anything to say about what's going on, sir? <laughs> Are you planning to reverse the announcement you made last Friday, sir? What do you have to say about everything that's been going on, sir? Just get into my office now. <laughs> that was a one-minute silence for the death of the pound. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to be very clever, isn't he, Quasi? Is that the problem? Should we be putting thick people in charge? <laughs> Ready when the call is there. <laughs> <laughs> one support already. <laughs> What was Jeremy Corbyn seen doing at the weekend in Liverpool? He was on a, uh, a game. Yes, he was. Uh, uh, was it like Kill Margaret Thatcher or something? It was a video game <laughs> called... No, it was. Thatcher's Tech Base. Yes. According to the Mail, the game features a demonic version of Margaret Thatcher. There's a demonic version. <laughs> it's called Liz. <laughs> Keir Starmer was free to strut his stuff at the Labour Party conference. What was he promising? All sorts. Yes. A great British energy company. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to invest in British green technology. Uh, it's going to focus on other environmental issues, such as clean air, although they will have a problem selling that to the people of Bradford. Let's have a look at this. When they create clean air, how do they keep it? Because when the wind blows, the clean air goes. And that's, that's what I want to know. How, how are they going to put a big dome over Bradford? 
<laughs> he's got a point. Yes. I think he's right. He should be Chancellor. What else did Keir Starmer do extraordinarily at the... Sing Lincoln the National Party? Anthem. They got them to sing the oh, National yeah. Anthem, that's right. They hired a professional singer to sing it. Let's have a look at this. It's, it's, it's lovely, this. Mm. Sentim victorious <laughs> This is the government's economic plans in disarray. In an attempt to calm the markets, Liz Truss did a round of local radio interviews. As the interviews went out, the BBC received a flood of complaints from listeners having technical problems. A BBC spokesperson apologised for the long silences and unintelligible noises and said, I'm afraid that's just how she speaks. <laughs> <laughs> the Labour Party also held their conference this week. The only discordant note came when Labour MP Rupa Huck described the Eton-educated Kwasi Kwarteng as being superficially black. Rupa Huck herself went to a fee-paying independent school, so I guess she's only superficially left-wing. <laughs> <laughs> In more cheerful news, the Royal Mint has now fixed a date for King Charles's head to go on the money, so look out for that on the new thousand-pound coin. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Rhea, take a look at this. Ah, this is uh, the referendum, is it? Are they making oh. shrouds? <laughs> oh, that's the troops who've been called up. Bye! <laughs> You're not coming back. Oh, and this is fun. You're a murderer. No, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, what's going on? They've had a referendum. And these are the four regions that he currently kind of has some kind of military mm -hmm. control over. Well, he's basically okay. saying these countries are now Russia. Mm -hmm. So, if you send troops into what is now Russia, I can use the nuclear weapon. You know, which is comedy gold, really. <laughs> You're determined to cheer us up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> he was an interesting canvassing technique, and certainly something the Lib Dems could do, is to send armed men to yeah. knock. <laughs> yes, this is Putin's illegitimate land grab through a series of dodgy referendums in Ukraine. Germany's Olaf Scholz called them a sham. France's Emmanuel Macron called them a tragic parody. And Scotland's Nicola Sturgeon called them a perfectly legitimate attempt <laughs> to break free from the shackles <laughs> of an oppressive regime. Uh, how close was the vote? 99 per cent. 99.23 in favour of joining Russia. But that was in Donetsk. I think the votes were significantly lower in other regions. Some of them were as low as 98. <laughs> in a speech this week, Putin also said the referendum was a response to the West and Britain's attempts to destroy our country. It's an outrageous slur. We're perfectly busy enough destroying our own. <laughs> Very much indeed. <laughs> He's ordered another 300,000 eligible men to be called up to fight. What's the response been? Well, it's been awful. I mean, there was one wife who just said, I will break both of my husband's legs to stop him going. And you go, both? You don't need to do both. Like, one would do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So 10,000 men signed up to fight in the first wave. But that's been dwarfed by the estimated 194,000 people who fled Russia since the conscription was announced. While the Daily Mail has reported that one of the most Googled search terms in Russia this week has been how to break your own arm. <laughs> <laughs> Who did manage to get out of Russia this week? Putin. He had a short break in, um... No. Florida. No, not Putin. <laughs> uh, no, five British prisoners. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, there was a prisoner oh, yeah. swap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Five British prisoners have been captured in Ukraine and have now been freed. One was flown back to the UK on a private plane and is now at his sister's flat in Luton. <laughs> so the ordeal is not entirely over yet. <laughs> From what unexpected quarter has Putin been getting criticism? Trump. Trump? Trump. He was president of the United States. I remember. <laughs> I remember. Yes. In all the papers. Yeah. No, he's been criticised by oh, singer Ala Pugacheva. Oh, of course. Oh, yes, incredibly brave Russian pop singer. That's right, she's known as the Russian Dolly Parton. Because uh, if you open her up, there's a series of smaller, angrier singers <laughs> inside. Um, why might Pugacheva want to be careful about openly criticising the war? in Ukraine. Well, you tend to fall out of a window shortly afterwards. This is exactly the right answer, yes. Most people end up dead if they do that, including the oil oligarch Ravel Maganov, who was found dead after falling from a hospital window. Energy businessman Ivan Pekarin died after falling off a speeding boat. And another unnamed Russian billionaire recently fell down the stairs of his bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> what else have Russian people had enough of? Apart from the war. They have had enough of Russian TV. 
which, according to the Times, has been ordered by the Kremlin to remove entertainment shows in favour of endless state propaganda. <laughs> that would never happen on our BBC. <laughs> 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 what British TV show has been proving popular in Russia recently? Would I Lie to You? <laughs> Good. This programme. Uh, no, uh, this morning, a recent clip from the show has been shown repeatedly in Russia as propaganda, an example of just how bad the energy crisis has become over here. Oh, yeah. Let us have a look. Here we go. Round and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. Da, 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 da. Oh, thousand pounds or energy down. bill. Thousand pounds or energy bill. It is going to be. It's oh! your energy bill! Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, if you think that's bleak, in round two, the guy has to fight a blind boy for a bread roll. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I think the main problem was when they went to see the Queen lying in state, they took that big glittery wheel with them. <laughs> <laughs> How many minutes do you want to mourn? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the latest from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. According to one newspaper, Putin's reservists have been told to pack tampons to soak up blood from bullet wounds. <laughs> and in the event of a nuclear strike, a small tube of ombre solaire factor 20. <laughs> Russian state TV is beginning to give airtime to those sceptical about Putin's campaign, one of the most vocal critics being leading political figure Boris Nadezhdin, who very sadly died tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Uh, yes, Paul. Right, this is it. NASA has built a ladder between the Earth and the asteroid, and they're sending people to climb up the ladder to hit the asteroid with tiny little hammers to direct the route away from the Earth to make sure it doesn't hit us. Bang on. Bang on. <laughs> That's exactly what it was called. <laughs> Bang on. <laughs> yes, it is the news that NASA yeah. got bored of flying satellites around things and have started smashing things into exactly. stuff. Exactly. <laughs> uh, here is the actual impact as seen on the approach. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Have we got mood music to go with this? Uh, something from Classic FM. Yeah. <laughs> Here we yeah, go. Go. go on in. Go on in. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh what's it stop uh, there for? Go on. Keep going. Go on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it it's like... like a cup of tea's eye view of a biscuit. Going <laughs> <laughs> a cup of tea's eye yeah. view? Yeah. You work for NASA, do you? Yes. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Here is inspirational NASA spokesman Bill Nelson encapsulating the historic moment. Hey, congratulations. Boy, the dark team, you really did this one very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's not an alien from another planet... <laughs> so the satellite itself is called DART. How long did it take the DART to hit the asteroid? How long did it take to get there? Yeah. Eight months. So it was in orbit for <laughs> ten months, but at the end of its journey, it was able to travel at four miles a second, according to The Guardian just as soon as it got clear of the congestion around Hangar Lane. <laughs> what was amazing is that they were able to accurately send it however many million yeah. miles into space, hit it where they wanted to hit it, and yet, when they were celebrating, they couldn't even make the high fives. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another angle of this week's big crash. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, the big question is, did it work? Yes. Too soon to say. Oh. All right, then. Too soon to say. NASA say they will study the course of the asteroid. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take them two years to study this. Well, I told you in five seconds. Uh, fingers on buzzers, teams. Here is your next one. Uh, yes. Now, this is a lovely portrait of the Duke of Norfolk. <laughs> <laughs> he was in charge of organising the funeral. Yes, he which was. Which went very well. Yes. And now he's in charge of organising Charles's coronation. That's right, yeah. But he's lost his driver's licence. According to the Times, he added six points to the nine he already had for previous speeding offences when he was caught on the phone to his wife, driving through a red light and cutting across a police... <laughs> But, but, it was beautifully coordinated. <laughs> uh, His car was being pulled by 142 sailors. <laughs> uh, why does being in charge of the coronation mean the Duke desperately needs his driving licence? He needs it so he can drive between venues. I mean, the truth is, we don't know. We don't know why. Because it was held in secret. It was we held in secret, allowed yes. to see it. Sentencing was done, the public were banned, media were banned, uh, because the secrecy around the plans for the coronation. Apparently, it's going to involve King Charles. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, what has King Charles unveiled this week? Oh, his insignia. He has, his cipher. Does it remind us of anything? No. Um, Ian? It doesn't look anything like Ian. <laughs> <laughs> of the footballer Cristiano Ronaldo's crest? They are very similar. There we are. Oh. 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 What's the latest bad news for Harry and Meghan? Is it the website? Yes, they, they, they were quite high on the yes. Royal Family website. Now they're right at the bottom. They're of right the at the bottom of the page. Terms and conditions. Let's have a look. <laughs> You're pretty much right. Let's have a look. There's we are. There we go. Down the line of succession and Doctor Gloucester, Princess Royal, Duke yeah. of Gloucester. Gloucester. And oh, yeah, there they are. Oh, oh they yeah. really are at the bottom. Oh, there he is. Yeah, just above. <laughs> Just above Prince Andrew, but below the Duke of Gloucester. If you click on that, it takes you to a very specialist website. <laughs> <laughs> the Duke of Gloucester, of course, famous for one particular thing. Interested in, and some that you're not, and it's slightly difficult to, to feign an interest. And is this an insulated roof, or is it...? <laughs> She's looking like that's the one question I wish you hadn't asked me. <laughs> uh, yes, this is the latest news from the world of royalty. The Duke of Norfolk has been banned from driving for using his phone while at the wheel and going through a red light. Here he is. Now, one of those medals isn't the best hat. I'll be astonished. <laughs> In other royal news, Prince George has reportedly told classmates, my father is going to be king, so you'd better watch out. You'd have been better off saying my great uncle's Prince Andrew, so you'd better watch out. <laughs> Uh, time now for the odd one out round. Uh, just one between you this week. Your four are mm. Tom Cruise, Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> South Korean President Yoon Suk Yeol, and Tesco. Here's my educator again. Yeah. Tesco's motto is every little helps, isn't it? Yeah. He's the South Korean president, so he's probably on average quite little. Tom Cruise, we know, is quite little. Arnold Schwarzenegger is not little. Did you say that was an educated guess? Yes. <laughs> That's on a level with the Chancellor. <laughs> Tom Cruise is the odd one out. Why would he be the odd one out, do you think? It's to do with people putting their foot in it. He's the only one who's not put his foot in it. <laughs> the others have insulted people, and he's not insulted anybody. I'll give you that. Oh. They have all offended people abroad, apart from Tom Cruise, who complimented people. Whom did Tom Cruise compliment? Oh, he likes us. He likes yes, Britain. Yes, absolutely. He likes Brit Brit the British. Uh, what incredible stunts has Tom Cruise been doing while he's been filming in the UK for his latest Mission Impossible? Running. He's been doing some running. He has attempted a parachute jump in the Lake District. Attempted? What, yeah. He's <laughs> been flying planes on Teesside and moved a full-size train from one side of Derbyshire to the other. That's phenomenal, a train that moves. <laughs> <laughs> South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol offended American politicians this week. How? You're all thickos, he said. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Um, Mr Yoon was caught on mic in New York using a Korean swear word to criticise Republican members of the US Congress who wouldn't back President Biden. The BBC reported that it could be translated to mean idiots, the Times went with bastards, and The Guardian went for fuckers. <laughs> What was Yoon's excuse for using the expletive? It's true. Um... <laughs> Miss Yoon's office told reporters that he'd been referring to his own countries. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't really thought that one through, has he? Yeah. A White House official said that after hearing the South Korean president swear, Joe Biden was shaken, but still didn't wake up. <laughs> and now to Arnold Schwarzenegger. He offended the people of Birmingham. How did he do that? Did he try and do the accent? <laughs> Failed to show up to his own fitness festival in the city, angering fans who, according to The Mirror, had paid £500 for a meet-and-greet with the Ooh. star. Finally, how has Tesco offended Spanish people? As a paella sandwich. Paella sandwich is exactly right, yes. Mm. Um, the Spanish paella police... Paella sandwich is nice, yeah. <laughs> All the carbs. Yeah. Yes, the Spanish police force tweeted that that was a <laughs> health hazard and accused the supermarket chain of heresy. Did you say the Spanish police? <laughs> yes. <laughs> No one expects them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have all offended people abroad, apart from Tom Cruise, who complimented people. Tom Cruise says he loves being in the UK, adding, I like the fact that I'm walking the same streets as Shakespeare and Dickens. 
Well, if you're a fan of Dickensian Britain, Tom, <laughs> stick around. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round. And we start with... Uh, Queen's English may be changed to what? Queen was English. <laughs> uh, Queen consort's English. Uh, <laughs> Queen's English may be changed to English, in it. <laughs> this is the news that, according to The Times, the Queen's English Society is considering changing its name to English in it. <laughs> this is a story in The Times, Matt. Is it at all true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Other things to be renamed are QCs and Queen's Guard, mm. although it doesn't matter what you call HMRC because you'll never get through to them anyway. <laughs> uh, next. <laughs> Neighbours complain after what 146 times in half an hour? Neighbours complain after interest rates went up 146 <laughs> times. Classic FM plays Marriage of Figaro. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're never more than 15 minutes away from the Lark Ascendant of Classic <laughs> Event. It is after woman's roosters crow. This is Jess Mason from Huddersfield, whose seven cockerels have been terrorising their neighbours. Normally, if you're woken up by a cock first thing in the morning, it means you're listening to breakfast radio. <laughs> and finally, women told to save the planet by what? By Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> women told to save the planet by having nothing to do with men. I, men think I might give you that one. Yes, it's to do with meat. Is it sex? sex? By not having sex, sex with men who barbecue. Not barbecue. having sex with meat. That's right. <laughs> this week, an animal rights group have blamed environmental problems on stereotypical men who barbecue, calling on women to punish them by refusing to have sex with them. They're allowed to kiss, but no tongs. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are three to Ian and Rhea, and Paul and Matt have nine. No. <laughs> But just before we go, there's time for the caption competition. Low budget Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Garden of Eden. Eve, you let yourself go. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Rhea Lena, Paul Merton and Matt Chorley, and I leave you with news that, as the Labour Party conference comes to a close in Liverpool, Keir Starmer regrets trying to match Angela Rayner drink for drink in an all-nighter at Fusion Nightclub. <laughs> In Milan, at the launch of a new range of swimsuits, one of Christian Dior's models realises that a three-bean salad wasn't perhaps the best idea for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and as Liz Truss's problems mount and another leadership election seems inevitable, there's dismay in almost every corner of Westminster. <laughs> Good night. What planet is she on? Philomena unlocks the mystery of human civilization, and she's got questions to ask. Watch Kunk on Earth on BBC iPlayer. Now, next, the one thing you don't expect to hear on your wedding day it's Am I Being Unreasonable?